Uh, good to see you again, Roma. And so yeah, glad nice for the, you too. the mm. Baxters coming out. I'm excited about that. I know you are too. And I've been Very watching. Excited. I've been watching it. So I uh, was looking forward to talking to you about it. When I, when I saw you at The Chosen, uh, you yes. told me that The Baxters was coming out and we would talk about it. Uh, and I posted it on my social media and I was really uh, surprised at how many people were like, oh, the Baxters is coming out. I've been waiting for this. Like there's uh -huh. there's a lot of buzz and anticipation I, for this. I know. Well, the book series sold over like 25, 26 million copies of this of this beautiful, beloved family book series. Karen Kingsbury is a you know, very, very talented storyteller. And she has created these books that people just devour and pour through. And I was one of those people. I mean, I began my journey, my Baxter journey as a fan of the books. And I reached out to Karen and said, please, please let me and trust me with your beloved family to bring it to life on the screen. Because when I was reading the books, I kept seeing it as pictures and visuals. And I knew it had to be told for TV. And, um, and I'm grateful to say that she did. She allowed me to, to take it and run with it. She and I have become great friends. We collaborated on this. She, you know, I kept looping her in, including her, because nobody knows this family better than Karen. And I think that all those fans of the books will, um, will be pleased. I think they'll see, they'll recognize the books, the books in the series. We have stuck to the story. We've stuck to the values of the books and the values in each of these characters. These are not pious people. These are not perfect people. This is a family of faith, but like all of our families, they're meeting challenges and it gets kind of messy around the edges, but, um, but they model love and they support each other. And, um, you know, this first season, Dwayne is called the red redemption season. And I'm so thrilled that Prime Video have given me the Easter season to launch a show like this, you know. They were very generous, I have to say. Last year, they also gave me Easter. If you remember, we spoke on, on a wing and a prayer. Right. And that did so well for them in that space. We know that there is a huge audience out there. Listen, it's been a great year for faith entertainment. A lot of big movies pop this year. Um, and, you know, when it's a TV show, it makes it even easier. You don't have to go out to a theater to find it. You can just curl up comfortably on the couch in your right. own home uh, and, and watch this with your family. Yeah. And it's been uh, now for you being in a series uh, I don't know if we if you if we count the Bible or not because the Bible was I guess it was a mini series. Uh, yes. What was your last series before this one? Like uh, the weekly yes, series? No, I haven't. No, no, it was touched by an angel. I mean, I moved. You know, my my career has just continued to to reshape itself. I I you know, as you know, because we've spoken, you've been very supportive of my work. And the, uh, I've written, I think, four books in the last few years and became a New York Times bestseller. Alleluia. And, yes. um, and I've been producing. And I've, my focus has been the other side of the camera. And I've been loving it. I've been loving uh, trying to get projects off the ground, get them together, cast them, you know, get, bring in the writers. I mean, it takes a village to make anything. Uh, and a TV series, you know, there are hundreds of people involved, but to be the, you know, it has to begin somewhere. And I have enjoyed the responsibilities that that role brings and the creative challenges. And But when this role uh, came up, you know, we were looking to cast it. We were casting our nets out. And, uh, and it struck me, I thought, you know, I could play this. I was about the right age for the character and, um, uh, you know, I, the values that Elizabeth Baxter holds near and dear are values that, that Roma Downey holds near and dear. So um, anyway, I, uh, it was my own show, so I cast myself in it. Yeah, I <laughs> and, love it. Uh, and, it's, and it was great. It was great fun. Uh, it was great fun. I've loved working with Ted McGinley, who plays John Baxter. He's, 
you know, he sort of personifies masculinity and steadiness. We call him Steady Teddy. And, you know, to see this married couple at the center of this family drama, to see their love and their devotion to each other and to see their love and their, sometimes their worry for their kids. You know, Elizabeth is very compassionate towards all of her children. She knows that all of her children are very different people and they all have different problems, right. you know, as inevitably we all do. And so some of them we see a lot of compassion. Sometimes we see tough love. Sometimes we see a feisty defense of anybody trying to hurt her right. children. Um, and she embodies all of that. But I think what I love most about her is that the glue the glue that she uses to hold her family together is prayer. Elizabeth Baxter at her heart is a prayer warrior. And, uh, and we see this in the early episodes when she's worrying about uh, one of their daughters uh, who's going through a marital crisis. Uh, we see her and Elizabeth and John Baxter hold hands and they pray together as you might do, as I might do for my kids. And right. uh, but it's it, but it's funny how rarely we get to see that on TV, you know. I mean, I couldn't tell you the last time I saw anybody praying sincerely on a TV show. Right, you and know? in so, and in Jesus' name. <laughs> I, I Jesus heard that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. yeah, that's right. That's who we're praying. That's it's it's a it's a it's a wonderful. It's been a really a great privilege to to get to bring this and. You know, I'm just very excited. I think audiences are really going to love it. It's, you know, it's a great hope opera. That's what it is. And it's <laughs> very, good. very, yeah. and it's very bingeable. You know, the yeah. episodes are short. And in the same way that when I first picked up the book to read and I couldn't put the book down, I know people are going to say, I will watch an episode of The Baxters and that won't be enough. I will right. we'll just watch one more. Well, maybe we'll watch one more. And before yeah. you know it, be through you know but i encourage families this easter just to curl up together it's something you can watch with your mom or with your kids you know yeah. and that kind of multi-generational uh and it's not preachy Dwayne. we're not but it's it's just that these you know the the core beliefs that this family have are just woven through it it's just natural storytelling it's authentic that's what it is and there are yeah. Christian families that have not been represented uh, in series like this, but the world is full of Christian families who pray through their problems. That's right. And so that's, that's what right. I, I appreciate about it because it's not, no, that's like right. you said, it's not sunny and everything's perfect and there's dysfunction and problems, but they're working through it. That's right. They're working through it and they stick together. You know, they have each other's, ultimately they have each other's backs you know and so yeah. it's it's a beautiful thing to see a family modeled in that way family love modeled in that way and uh, and in a way i think that is identifiable because uh, there are issues there is major dysfunction you know and um i mean show me a family that doesn't have that uh and so i think that people will really relate to it um Around our office, we already had some of the girls saying, which Baxter girl are you most like? You know, and there was a quiz <laughs> yeah. going around. Yeah. There was a quiz going around. I was like, well, can Elizabeth be one of the girls too? Um, and I've got these yeah. lovely, lovely actresses playing my daughters. And uh, uh, I mean, a beautiful, young, enthusiastic, up and coming, talented bunch. And uh, four daughters and a son. And they all do such great work. And, you know, they're very excited. Of course, they're all going to be on TV. And, you know, I've been thinking back to my first time on TV. And what a thrill that is. You know, as an actor, you work yeah. hard. It's a, it can be a thankless role. You know, for every yes you get told, you get 100 no's. So there's so much rejection for these actors, young actors today. And, uh, and these kids all did phenomenal work and um it doesn't hurt that they're all nice to look at as well um and they well, all have great warm hearts you know as uh and i know you're close to della and she took you under her wing and she now did. you're really in a position to do that for all these young actors and actresses that you know throughout their lives they'll be able to point to and say 
you know, I got to work with Roma and she just poured into me back then. Oh, well, thank you. It's true. Della, Della really did pour into me and that big angel wing wrapped itself lovingly around me and her mentorship and her kindness and her strength, really. You know, she was a, uh, you know, she was a forceful, powerful woman of God and a woman of prayer. And before we would do our angel reveal scenes, the way we would stop and we would pray uh, on the set, you know, which, you know, I have often done, but usually in the quiet of my own head. And to have, you know, she really emboldened me in my right. faith to, to really step out and step up. And I think we're seeing that in the industry now that with the success, you know, success sort of opens doors. And with the success of some of these faith projects, big movies this year, Sound of Freedom, Jesus Revolution. Uh, last week, I thought Ordinary Angel was fantastic. These movies that are opening up and they're really doing well, which opens the doors for the next wave and so on. And so we're hoping that the Baxters will do that for TV audiences. And I think it's one thing to go out and we should go out and support movies in the theater. But, um, you know, maybe COVID made me a lazy theater goer and I kind of enjoy the experience of curling up on my couch in the comfort of my own home. Right. And, and that's the beauty of, of Prime Video, that you get to do yeah. that. You get to just turn the TV on. And um, anyway, yeah, working with these kids, you know, I, I believe that I, in all things, kindness, kindness, kindness. And uh, I, you know, as... Uh, you know, as the as the producer on the set, and as the elder, the elder on the set, um, you know, I wanted to model that for them. That that's how we that we are to everybody. It doesn't matter if you were craft service, or you were the guest star. Everybody was treated with love. Everybody was treated with respect, and that's the kind of set we ran. You know, and that's the kind of business we run, and that's the kind of work that we want to do and want to be in. And um, I hope they all left encouraged. Yeah. Um, uh, my, I, Duane, I don't know if I told you that my own daughter, Riley, is in the series. If you see that wonderful poster shot, you know, with the family lined up, the girl okay. in the red dress at the end is my own daughter, real life oh, daughter. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that was fun. Well, maybe more fun for me than for Riley to have her. She was trying to keep, keep very professional on the set, and I just wanted to run in and <laughs> hug her every five minutes. Uh, but she did a great job as Erin, the youngest Baxter. That's and then awesome. we, uh, Kathy Lee Gifford, who's an, an old and dear friend of mine, uh, uh, graciously agreed to uh, come in and uh, and do a guest guest role for me but her beautiful daughter and talented daughter Cassidy Gifford is also a show uh, series regular she plays the girlfriend of Luke Baxter so there's a lot of mother daughter themes running through this but yeah. I might add it's not just the girls so I think girls will love it because it plays out as a great hope opera um, guys love it too and you know it's that sort of bingeable it's it's easy watching, but it's it's thought provoking. Anyway, I couldn't right. be more, more pleased to, you know, to to scream it from the rooftops. It's like I think you know, back in the day on Touched by an Angel, we we started sharing about our show, and uh, and I feel you know in the, gosh, how many years ago? Thirty years that I've been in this space, um, you know, and t trying to bring faith content, uplifting content, content that glorifies God to the screen. And uh, and the Baxters is on target for that, but it's also just really good entertainment. I, I wondered, I was going to ask you just kind of a lighthearted question. Uh, in the series, are you uh, trying to suppress your accent at all? Are you trying yes, to? I am. I, you know, I, I, I think my accent... You, could you hear it? What did you think? No, I, 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 I heard it. It sounded very American, and I, I just yes, wondered. That's I, what I was trying. To, yeah, yeah, I. No, I, I was thought, trying to be American. Yeah, I was trying to be, and then every now and then it would slip out. But you know, I have to say that, you know, I have been in America. America has been so good to me, and I am and so grateful. But as you know, I'm an Irish girl at heart. But yeah. I have been in America much longer than I've ever was in Ireland. You know. 
America is yeah. my home. My children are American born. And my accent itself has has softened. My own it's, Irish yeah. accent has softened. From when, you know, 30 years ago in Touched by an Angel, I was more recently uh, yeah. arrived arrived in America. But certainly for Elizabeth Baxter, I was trying. You know, I had to learn an American accent back when I played Jackie Kennedy. Mm -hmm. uh, in the early 90s, I played her in a big mini series, and they hired a, an accent uh, coach, and he was they he, they're called a dial a dialectician. <laughs> Who knew? I was a new word to me, uh, but we nicknamed him the brogue basher. And any time he heard me say anything that sounded vaguely <laughs> like I was from Ireland, he would hit me over the head with a script, and he used to say to me. Don't call home. Don't be phoning anybody from home because the more I would call home, the stronger right, my yeah. accent would get, you know. So there was no backstory to explain that Elizabeth Baxter was Irish because she wasn't Irish. In Elizabeth right, yeah. and Karen's book, she's American. So I tried to do my best. So I, I'm so you, pleased that you didn't hear my yeah, Irish Yeah, I, I, listened, I listened for it and I thought, well, maybe, maybe they'll make her Irish like they did with Olivia Newton-John in Greece, you know, but... Uh. Right, you can see, that's right. And anything could be done. I'm sure Karen right, would have yeah. uh, allowed me to, but but uh, I, I think I did. You know, there's the occasional word that always slips through or yeah. sometimes, you know, like Americans typically, when they end a word that ends in a T or a D, it's sort of silent, you know, where we would say silent. You know, t yeah, the T yeah. would be quite pronounced. So sometimes I can hear those little endings show up instead of an ending. Right. You know? <laughs> it's good seeing you. And I know you for faith content, but every once in a while I'm reminded of how more expansive your career was than just, you know, what I've known you, you know, yes. I know Touched by an Angel, but uh, even knowing that, you, you know, the, the Queen gave you an honor, uh, Yes, I've seen. A, yeah, I, got a, 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 uh -huh. I don't know if you've seen this Facebook reel where uh, when you hosted Saturday Night Live, when Norm Macdonald came up on the stage just so he could, you know, so he could give you a kiss. Have you seen that? You know, yeah, it's and like, so he could say he, was, he said he wanted to say he was touched by an angel. <laughs> yeah. So all that um, I, I just like I'm reminded know, and then know, your book, and your you book. Know, signing. I mean, I don't know if you ever saw that I played. Uh, 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 the Queen of the Amazons in Hercules and the Amazon Women. Oh, yeah. Now, I hasten to add that I am five feet four, and I spent my entire performance standing on a box to make me look <laughs> like I was bigger. I had spear, I had armor. Um, but, you know, I in the early days, Duane, I was an actress looking for a job. I had rent to pay just like everybody else, you know. When I finally uh, got cast to play the angel, I was able to bring together you know what i believe with, with what i do but uh not everybody is as fortunate as that you know sometimes you just you know i've never done anything that i wouldn't have wanted my own father to see right yeah. um but but uh but i uh you know i've done jobs that were just you know i, I was like well i don't know that it's the greatest thing i've I ever done, done but, yeah. I, but i needed to pay you know my bills just like the next person yeah well, I thank you for this series. And, and I think uh, just like you're talking about other people, you've opened the door for other people as well. Uh, you're, you're continue to open the door for people to express their faith and for faith and entertainment. And I'm well, so I, glad I about this so. series. I mean, I was so thrilled to be at The Chosen because, you know, we, we had tried to do something like that with AD, you know, and we had started that ball rolling with the Bible. And sometimes, you know, it's just, it takes time for something to, and now you see The Chosen doing so well, I couldn't be happier for audiences everywhere. And, you know, I think we're, we're all, you know, we all have these great stories to tell. We have to support each other in telling them. And um, I know the audience is out there and hungry to, to see shows that, that represent who we are on the screen. Yeah. So. It's been and my pleasure to do it. It's great to see you again. It was lovely to see you that night. Sorry, we were a bit rushed at the end of the night. Oh, yeah, I know. It was, a great, yeah. it was a great screening. Wasn't it great to see it in an audience with all those other people, too? It was like a different yes. kind of experience. 
When I go to a movie premiere, sometimes they'll say, you know, press doesn't want to sit through the movie. So you just do the red carpet and go. But I always want to sit through the movie because there's an excitement. There's an energy with I all agree. the people there. Yeah. I so. agree. And to and particularly for something like The Chosen, to hear the audience reaction, to hear people laugh and then people cheered, you know, and it's like that's. You yeah. really feel involved and engaged. And so I encourage anybody that's watching the Baxters, you know, you know, by all means, watch it and watch it however you watch stuff. If it's your laptop or you're on your phone. But if you can sit down with your family and mm -hmm. watch it together, it's it's, you know, it's because it's about family. It might be nice to connect with your own family and make it a family experience. Yes. Thank you, Roma. Always great talking to you and, and uh, Lovely to see excited you. about the you. series. Thank you all.